Okay, so let's continue to discuss two more examples about uh, implicit di differentiation and then uh, we'll finish this section, okay? So look at this problem. I have x squared plus y squared equals sine of xy and the problem asks us to find dy dx, okay? Um, which is the derivative of y with respect to x. So, as you can tell, that uh, it's very, very challenging, or it's almost impossible to write y in terms of x explicitly, okay? So that's why we use the implicit differentiation. Again, uh, take the derivative with respect to x on both sides, and the treat y is a function of x. So that's what we do in the first step. So d And then there's a distribution dx squared dx plus dy squared dx plus d sine of xy dx. Okay. So the derivative uh, dx squared dx very easy to calculate, which is 2x. dy squared dx, as we talked about, y is a function of x. And when we do this part, you're going to use the idea of the chain rule, okay? Which is going to give you 2y, right? Times dy dx, okay? Equal. The right hand side, again, you're going to use the spirit of the chain rule, okay? So, it's going to be the outside function is sine of x, okay? Inside, which is xy. So it's a cosine of xy, right? And times the derivative of the inside function with respect to x. Okay, with respect to x. And uh, you see, guys, dxy dx, to figure out the derivative of this, we're going to use product rule, right? In fact, in the first example, uh, first part of section 3.7, we'll talk about this. So that is cosine of xy times, uh, let's see, dx dx y plus x times dy dx. Okay. And then on the left is still 2x plus 2y times dy. And for here, dx dx equals 1. So you have this cosine of xy, right? Times the value of parentheses y plus x times dy dx. Okay? And uh, still left is 2x plus 2y times dy dx. And uh, we can distribute this. That are going to give us is y times cosine of xy. I write it into this way because uh, y and cosine xy they have the same position. You know, if I write it into cosine xy times y, sometimes students might uh, accidentally distribute this y into inside parentheses, which is not true. Okay, and then plus x times cosine of xy times dy dx. Okay, this problem is kind of a longer one. So 2x plus 2y times dy dx. Okay. Now things become uh, very clear. Our goal is to figure out what is dy dx, right? And then we're almost there. So except we need to do some arrangement. And what we can do is we can put all the terms involving dy dx on the left and then put all of the rest into the right. So let me use this part to calculate this. That is 2y okay, times dy dx okay, uh, minus from this, okay, minus x times cosine of xy times 
dy dx, okay, equals y times cosine of xy minus 2x, okay, minus 2x. And I can factor dy dx out. So the final answer for this is going to be y times cosine of xy minus 2x over 2y minus x times cosine of xy. Okay? So that is the final answer. Okay? Because I factor dy dx out, there is a 2y left minus x times xy, which is the denominator of this. Right hand side is just y times cosine xy minus 2x. Okay? So this is the first uh, um, you know, example for part two of the implicit differentiation. Now let's uh, look at another problem. Okay? And before we start, let me introduce one new uh, concept, which is called a normal line. Okay, normal line. So what it means is uh, right now, you see, suppose this is a curve. Uh, standard for function or part of the function and then we already know that the tangent line right which is uh, um, you know just to have one uh, touching with this curve and now uh, a new concept is called a normal line here okay what I said is it also has only one intercept uh, point well well, maybe at this moment, okay. Let, let me take my words back. So the normal line is said like a passing the point, uh, the same point, but is perpendicular uh, to the tangent line, okay? Or orthogonal to the tangent line. Okay? In other words, this point is the same point that tangent line touching at this curve. But uh, the normal line, it passes this part, but also uh, perpendicular, which forms a 19 degree uh, angle uh, with the tangent line, okay? So a quick little reminder is, guys, if two lines uh, are perpendicular, you know, also, you know, both of the two lines are now vertical lines, then the relationship between the slope of those two perpendicular lines is m1 equals negative reciprocal of m2, or you can write as m2 equals negative reciprocal of m1, okay? So it's one equals the negative reciprocal of the other. So this is the relationship um, of those, okay? So as you can tell, if we can figure out the slope of the tangent line and then we take a negative reciprocal that are going to give us the slope of the normal line okay normal line so with that we look at this example here so show that first of all 2 4 lies on the curve x cubed plus y cubed minus 9x where a uh, 9xy equals 0 and then figure out the tangent line equation of the tangent line and the equation of the normal line at the point of 2, 4. Um, okay, so this actually is a, is a graph for this uh, curve, x cubed plus y cubed minus 9x, y equals 0. Beautiful, right? So, all right, so let's, uh, let's work on that. First part, it asks us to show that uh, two point, 2, 4 lies on this. So what we can do is we can substitute 2, 4 into the left side of this equation and to see if it is equal to 0. So x equals 2, so it's 2 cubed plus 4 cubed, right? Minus 9 times 2 times 4. That gives us this is 8. This is actually 64, right? This is uh, 18 times 4 gives us 72. So 72 minus 72 gives us 0. The right hand side of the equation is also 0. So the superfluous left hand side equals the right hand side, right? Yes, the point lies on the curve. Okay. 
and then choose for probably the sound from here, okay? Uh, assume this is this one. And you see only the different color. This is the tangent line, right? And this is the normal line, okay? It's normal. Line. So we have to figure out what is the slope of the tangent line first. And then based on the negative reciprocal relationship, we can handle the slope of the uh, normal line, okay? How do we do that? Again, to figure out the slope of the tangent line, we need to figure out what is dy dx, right? Because that, that's the definition. So how do we do that? Well, let me this, okay? Flip. So x cubed plus y cubed minus 9xy equals 0. Figure out the dy dx, right? So again, use the implicit differentiation, which is dx cubed dx plus dy cubed dx, right? Minus 9 times dxy dx equals 0. So basically it's a repeated work, okay? This problem is almost identical like the example one I showed you in this section. So this part is 3x squared. This part is 3y squared times dy dx. Again, use the square root of the chain rule, minus nine times, right? This dx, y, dx, we talked about three times, okay? So you gotta use, again, the product rule. So it's dx, dx, y, plus x times dy dx equals zero. And then what we can do is just to do some simplification. So 3xy plus 3y squared times dy dx uh, minus 9y times d, well, actually, so here, guys, you can see dx dx equals one. So it's just a minus nine times y, okay? And then minus nine x times dy dx equals zero, okay? So now we can factor dy dx out. And, you know, minus 3x squared, so 3x squared cancel out plus 9y, so it all goes to the right hand side. Hence, dy dx equals Negative three x squared plus nine y over three y squared minus nine x. Okay, and the sign nine x. And also, guys, you can see that on the top and the bottom, three is a common factor. Okay, so we can even simplify one more. Give us negative x squared plus three y over y squared minus three x. Okay, so this is dy dx. Okay. Remember, this is going to be the slope of the tangent line corresponding to the point on the curve. What we're looking for is what is the dy dx? Do you see that it's at a 2 4, right, guys? Uh, you see it's at 2 4. Yeah, so it's 2 4. Okay. So what we need to do is we substitute x with 2, y equals 4, and then that value is going to be the slope of the tangent line. So plug in negative 2 squared plus 3 times 4 over 4 squared minus 3 times 2. That's going to give us negative 4 plus 12 over 16 minus 6, that is 8 over 10, which is 4 over 5, okay? So this is the slope uh, of the tangent line. And then correspondingly, the slope of the normal line is going to be negative 1 over 4 over 5, which gives you its negative 5 
slope of four. Okay, so that's the slope for the normal line. We got a slope of tangent line. We got a slope of normal line, and then we know the point of two four. So the we can use the point slope format. Uh, the tangent line, which is gonna be y minus four equals four over five times x minus two, right? And the normal line is gonna be y minus four equals negative five over four times x minus two. So we finish this problem, okay? And uh, yeah, so this is the end of section 3.7. And uh, right, so as we work through those three examples, you can tell that the implicit differentiation is basically uh, it's extends idea um, of chain rule uh, for the most part, right? Because we treat y is a function of x. And then no matter how crazy the format is, like this y cube, when we take the derivative with respect to x, we know it's a 3y squared times dy dx, and that is exactly within the chain rule. Okay. Uh, and also we talk about the uh, the uh, tangent line and normal line, right? Uh, these are perpendicular, so the slope one equals negative root square of the other and vice versa uh, and then we finish uh, this okay so so this is the end of uh, 3.7 so i'll stop here and i'll see you on 3.8 okay bye